So we have Surah 2, verse 136. Say, O believers, we have believed in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the descendants and what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and we are Muslims in submission to him. Look at this. We believe that there are all these books out there and we draw no distinction between any of them. This makes no sense if Allah is somehow mysteriously claiming that they've all been corrupted because that would be a pretty big distinction, wouldn't it? Perfect. And Muslims, look, this is say, oh believers. You Muslims who are, who are running around saying, ah, oh, the Torah has been corrupted, the gospel has been corrupted, everything's been corrupted, the Quran is the only book that hasn't been corrupted. You are commanded to say, we believe in all these books and we draw no distinction between them. When you're the one saying, guys, we have to draw a distinction between the Quran and the other books because the Quran hasn't been corrupted and all these other books have been corrupted. So you are completely contradicting your own God. And Adnan puts it on the screen? Sam, yeah. Adnan puts this on the screen? I guess he's kind of right because he does do that with the Quran, right? He does go to the Quran yep. and, oh, uh, I don't like that part about uh, people still having the gospel. And I don't like this part about people still having the Torah. So I'll just pick and choose. And so maybe, maybe he's not actually drawing a distinction. He treats all books the same way. Let me go there, find the parts that I like, I'll yeah. keep those, and all the parts I don't like, I throw those out, and I treat everyone like that. That's, that's, uh, welcome yeah, to Islam. You can't say the previous books are corrupted because you are making a distinction. I hope that sunk in. Okay, up, oh, now he just has a comment. Let's see. As for the current Bible, the following, okay, now he's saying where, where it shows that it's been corrupted. As for the current Bible, the following verses of the Quran categorically. Now, oh, notice, he doesn't want to say unequivocally, but he does say categorically. That's, that's a, I'll, I'll give him categorically. We'll, we'll count that as unequivocally. As for the current Bible, the following verses of the Quran categorically state that the scriptures of the Jews and the Christians have been corrupted. Notice, Sam, it's not just the Jews. So he contradicts himself. Wow. No, this is an embarrassment, but not because notice he went from the first video saying this statement is not unequivocal. It is not saying the New Testament is corrupt. I mean, make up your mind. dude. This is the verse Muslims most commonly put forward as the unequivocal verse referring to the corruption of the gospel. This is what I got. I got this over and over and over again, like a beating drum. Muhammad says to the Jews, because the context is speaking to the Jews, my Quran confirms what you have. I confirm what you already possess. I confirm what's in your hands. Repeatedly, he says, the Quran and me confirm what you have in your possession, what you already have, what's there right now. I'm confirming, so believe in me. And he is saying, why don't they believe in me? I'm saying what you have is true, and my book confirms what you have true, so I'm saying your scriptures are true. That's the first thing. And secondly, it says only a party of them wrote a book with their own hand, a party. So even if it's referring to corruption to, let's say, a biblical manuscript, the Quran is clear. It's a party that did it, not everyone, because don't forget at that time, the Old Testament had been widespread. It wasn't just in the possession of the Jews in Arabia. The Christians had copies of the Old Testament, and Christians all over the then-known world had copies of the Old Testament, and Jews as well. To then take one verse, referring to a particular group, in a particular location, at a particular time, and then argue wholesale corruption, that shows how desperate you are. Perfect. Especially when you go to chapter 3, verse 113 and 114 of the Quran, and chapter 3, verse 199, where it says, they're not all alike. There is a party among the Jews and Christians who will not sell the signs of Allah, but recite, read the scriptures as they should be recited. Boom. So if you're telling us that as of the revelation of Surah 2, the Torah and the gospel, even though this isn't saying, you can read the context, it isn't saying one word about the gospel, but this verse is, uh, is magically saying that the Torah and the gospel had been corrupted, then Allah forgot all about it just a few years later, and he's senile. That's what you're telling us, and, Mah and so and so was Muhammad. That's what that's what you're telling us. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's you're it? telling us. That, and and you expect or, now. Notice they tell us to take their religion seriously when they treat it like this. Woe to those who write the scripture with their own hands, then say this is from Allah, in order to change it for a small price. Someone someone get a someone get one dollar. Someone get one dollar ready ready in the super chat. Send me a super chat and say, David, this is to write something from Allah. All right, <clears throat> I'm giving a revelation. Surah 115, verse 3 of the Quran <laughs> says Muhammad was a false prophet. The rule that Muslims laid down, is, Sam, is if, someone's, if someone writes something and says this is from God, then somehow the Torah and the gospel 
have been corrupted, right? It's not just it's not just what this person has written with his own hand is is now corrupted. It's the scriptures of the Jews and the scriptures of the Christians, even though Allah repeatedly confirms them, and so does Muhammad. Somehow, if you write something, if you write something and claim that yeah, it's from it, God bro. for a small oh. price, you've just corrupted the book. And guys, if you just think about how stupid that is, right? Oh. The idea that me sitting here the idea that me sitting here writing something and saying it's 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 the Quran would somehow corrupt any Quran, let alone all Qurans, then you will understand how utterly stupid and ridiculous it is to say, up, oh, the Quran just condemns someone for writing something, therefore all the Torah around the world has been corrupted and all the gospel around the world has been corrupted. No one was No one was in a position to corrupt the Torah that way or the gospel that way. They, they existed in too many different parts of the world. If someone ever decided, hey, I'm going to change this, guess what? It doesn't change in other areas. This is what he said categorically proves the corruption of the text here, Sam. Here we go. And indeed, there is among them a party who alter the scripture with their tongues. Oh, you're kidding me. With their tongues. So you may think it is from the scripture, but it is not from the scripture. Yeah, and they kidding. say, this is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. And they speak untruth about Allah while they know if you misinterpret a book meaning because that's what it means with your tongue you're not corrupting the text you've corrupted the book how many Muslims have you seen over the years the ones we've debated the ones we responded to constantly even with Adnan this entire session was a response to his misinterpreting the Quran so according to Adnan Rashid he has been corrupting the Quran ever since he got into apologetics. Anyone else that he disagrees with, like the Shia, when he accuses them of misinterpreting the Quran, he's now admitting they've corrupted the Quran. So in other words, according to his application of this passage, if you misinterpret the Quran with your tongue, you corrupted the text of the Quran, that means you have all these Muslims corrupting the text of the Quran over and over and over again because they all accuse of misinterpreting the Quran. And it's not just Sunni and Shia. Adnan knows this in Sunni Islam. He's a Salafi. And he disagrees with the Ashari and the Maturidi regarding what the Quran means when it says Allah has eyes and hands. So either he's corrupting their meaning or they're corrupting the meaning. But either way, if you corrupt the meaning, you've corrupted the Quran. The text is now corrupt. It's not real, reliable. There goes the Quran. Why are you a Muslim, Adnan? Why do you keep following Muhammad? Um... So, yeah, there's a 378. So we've we've proven that the Quran has been corrupted. Islam is now, uh, we can end that myth of the perfect preservation of the Quran because it's been corrupted. Did it here, happened here tonight, folks. You saw it. Thank you, Adnan Rashid, for helping us corrupt yes. the Quran universally.